Today, I'm delighted to introduce Ambassador Louis Sussman, who was the U.S. Ambassador to the United Kingdom from 2009 to 2013. A lawyer and investment banker, he retired as Vice Chairman of Citigroup Global Markets in Chicago just before President Obama tapped him to be Ambassador to the Court of St. James. After his tenure in London, Ambassador Sussman was a member of the Secretary of State's Foreign Affairs Policy Board until 2017. He also serves as a trustee of the Art Institute of Chicago, which is no surprise to anyone who has seen his remarkable collection of contemporary art. Most importantly for us, Ambassador Sussman was also appointed to the Board of Trustees of the Wilson Center. Good afternoon, Ambassador. Good afternoon, Robin. Ambassador, I remember so vividly the day that the Queen's horse and carriage stopped by the embassy to pick up you and Mrs. Sussman for your presentation of credentials. What were your first impressions of that meeting with Her Majesty? Uh, fabulous. I think you're overwhelmed by how incredibly brief she is and asked all the, the right questions. You, you, you take the carriage uh, to the uh, uh, to the Buckingham Palace, as a sideline, there was helicopters over and, huh. and security. And I said to my chief of security, why do we have all this security? He says, I can't afford you getting shot on this day. So wow. I, uh, I remember that. But listen, you go there, they, they give you a lot of rehearsal for this event. It's a big deal. She was gracious. As always, she, I was able to bring, as you know, four of my staff, mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. Sussman was there first with the lady in waiting, and then she was brought. And all you can say is, she's an icon. She's fabulous, and she was fabulous that first day I met her, up to the last day in which she gave me an audience to leave. Mm -hmm. uh, great thrill. You know, the Queen met so many American presidents all the way throughout her reign. From your experience with her, how did she view our special relationship? And what was her most significant contribution to it? Well, I think she viewed it um, well, to be honest with you. When I had my departing uh, audience, she asked me the question, is there really a special relationship? You'll tell me the truth. And I told her there is. Uh, we did so much in the special relationship in the intelligence field. Uh, we were involved with them at all levels of intelligence and sharing. Uh, in addition to the fact there was a great deal in commercial and trade, as you know, Robin. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that um, uh, she is, she was so involved in it. She was so intense in doing anything she could to keep the relationship strong. Uh, I remember the story that so many times, because we weren't a member of the EU and they were, they mm -hmm. carried our water over for that, uh, mm -hmm. whenever we had a mission. Uh, mm -hmm. she, everything she did, as long as it was in the UK's best interest, she promoted this special relationship. And she told me once, it was special to her. Oh, so interesting. It's a time of transition for Britain um, because I, I thought it was so poignant that we saw the death of Her Majesty, um, the death of the head of state just uh, days after there was a change of head of government to Liz Truss. Um, what are the key challenges that you see lying ahead for Britain in the future? Well, I would suggest to you that um, I don't mean to be pessimistic, but I think Liz Truss has got a big job to fill. She's mm -hmm. got a lot of issues that um, are very difficult, whether it's Northern Ireland, Brexit, uh, where they stand in the EU, terrorism, goes on and on. I don't think that Boris Johnson uh, left her a, a very positive plate. And of course, she isn't known for her economic uh, expertise and the, the economy is gonna be crucial. So she's got a big job. Do I think she can fill it out? I hope she does. And I think she's got some very capable people around her. Hmm. 
mourning for the Queen is worldwide. You see it in the news all over the world. Um, what is the reason that so many people across the world have come to value her? Uh, they've come to value her because everything she do has done in the 70 years has been perfect, with one or two exceptions. Uh, she is dignified. She is elegant. Uh, she's warm and humorous at times. And when you're with her, you really feel that you feel diminished because you're a commoner, but she never makes you feel that way. Mm -hmm. uh, she had a way about it, Robin, that made you feel terrific. So you had an experience that is very rare. You invited her to dinner at your house, to Winfield House, when President Obama visited the UK. What can you tell us about that experience? And if you're willing to say it, were you nervous? Uh, I'll answer the last question first. Yes, <laughs> I was nervous. But you're going to see that Obama came for a state visit. And protocol calls for it to be at Buckingham Palace. And then after that, the next day, the president hosts the queen on a return state visit, which is held at Winfield House which of course was our residence. So it, it was really a really big deal. Uh, it's hard to explain uh, all the preparations that went into it, all the protocol that had to be uh, achieved. And when she uh, pulled up our driveway in this absolutely magnificent Rolls Royce and, and the president greeted her and Mrs. Obama and Mrs. Sussman and myself, uh, I will tell you, it was the thrill of a lifetime. Wow, that must have been something. During the course of the time you were in Britain, you also had the opportunity to meet Prince Charles, now King Charles III. What can we expect from him um, as he takes on this great big challenge of succeeding his mother? Well, I will answer uh, the question, what can we expect of him? Uh, but I would suggest to you that he's been preparing for this for a long time, mm -hmm. 70 years almost. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's seen uh, how the queen handles everything and how everything should be handled. That being said, his personality prior to becoming king was that of a very interesting, uh, engaged person, not afraid of controversy, mm -hmm. which uh, uh, created a lot of times, whether it was over architecture or uh, other issues. Uh, I think we can expect from him to step out of that role 100%. Hmm. He will be non-political as the Queen was. He will be uh, warm, gracious, as we've seen in the two or three speeches he's made recently. And while I don't think he could ever achieve the type of devotion and love that she created, I think he's going to do fine. And I think he's going to have a relationship with the people that are his subjects. I wonder whether you and Mrs. Sussman have a favorite story or anecdote, a favorite memory of the Queen to share with us. I'd love to hear that. Well, I can't speak for Mrs. Sussman uh, because uh, she certainly uh, enjoyed her time that she spent with the Queen and planning various events. Uh, I have a special moment I shall never, never forget. But um, I can tell you, uh, it really was two moments. First moment was when she was kind enough to give me an audience when I left. And I went to the inner courtyard of Buckingham Palace and uh, was ushered in by uh, the, the military to the same room that she would have the weekly interviews with the prime minister. And she was phenomenal. She had two questions for me. She was well briefed as usual. First question was, what was the President Obama's second term agenda? And the second one was, uh, I want to be sure, is there really a special relationship between the UK and the United Kingdom? When that was finished, uh, I, I was supposed to have 15 minutes and we were into a half an hour. Her uh, aide came in and told her time was up. And she turned to the aide and said, uh, would you get me uh, my gift for the ambassador? Now, I didn't have a gift for her, 
So I was mm -hmm. taken back. She gave me the most elegant pair of enamel cufflinks that said ER2 on them from her jeweler. And I took those and I left and I got in my limousine and I said to my staff, we're not moving. <laughs> Excuse me. I just spent 25 minutes with the Queen of England and that's a lifetime experience. I'm going to sit here and soak it up. So that was the first one and it will always be in my memory. Mm -hmm. The second one was a little different. I told you she held a state dinner for Obama mm -hmm. and uh, it was indescribable. 175 people. Uh, there was a footman behind every chair. It's the most elegant thing you could imagine. Everybody's in tails and long dress. Queen is bedecked in diamonds. And uh, after dinner, we go to the, what they call the, uh, the gallery. All these beautiful paintings are with uh, coffee and tea and after dinner drinks. And uh, everybody's having a very good time. Uh, the next thing I know, someone is pulling my tails. Hmm. Dinner. So I turn around and my God, it's the queen. <laughs> she looks at me, she says, ambassador, and she throws out her left wrist. You go find your Preston. It's 11 o'clock and it's time for bed. <laughs> and, and she can't leave until he leaves. And he was staying at Buckingham Palace. So I found the president and I said to him, Mr. President, it's time for, to go to bed. He said, Lewis, why would I want to go to bed? I'm having the best time in my life. I just met Tom Cruise and <laughs> went to and all kinds of star celebrities, etc. I said, uh, uh, Mr. President, the Queen just came to me. Had, tell me to find you to tell you that uh, it's time for bed. It's 11 o'clock. And he looks at me with this look and says, the Queen did that? And I said, yes, Mr. President. And the next thing I heard was a voice saying, Michelle, it's time for bed. <laughs> and, uh, it was a memory. It was a memory I'll never forget. Wow, that is an incredible story. Um, and I, uh, I can only imagine how surprised you were at the, at the moment when you turned around and saw that it was the Queen telling you to relay this message. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, I really want to thank you so much for joining us and sharing these memories of, uh, of your time in the UK with us, uh, and especially at this moment at when we are seeing the entire panoply of events that are, that are running up to the funeral of the, of the Queen. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Wilson Center. Thank you for having me. The Wilson Center is a great institution, well-led, uh, and you're part of that leadership. And it's a good it's a good relationship and special relationship for the United States and the Wilson Center. Thank you very much for having me.